One, two, three. My lord, it has come much closer. It draws near. The roar of the lion. Finishing the first game and its extreme legends, I didn't want to touch the series again for a while, but I decided to get it over with. I might as well finish the entire series since I only have about 4 more games to cover. Well today, we're looking at one of the games I grew up playing, that being Samurai Warriors 2 for the PlayStation 2. However, I grew up with the Xbox 360 version and remember completing almost everything before stopping. Well, since the game is 17 years old this year, let's see if it has aged well in any way. Time to try out another game from childhood and find out if it's truly any good. The story mode focuses on the rise of Nobunaga Oda and ends at the Battle of Sekigahara, which historians consider the most important battle and the beginning of the Tokugawa Shogunate rule. Every single character in the game gets a Musua mode of some caliber, while certain characters get more love for obvious reasons like Iyasu, Nobunaga, and Mitsuhide. There are those who get only a few like Oichi. Then there's two that get no Musua mode being Ramaru Mori and Akuni, both of which are locked and Ramaru is glitched, with 24 officers being playable via Musua mode total. The gameplay revolves around the usual protect your commander slash main camp and take out the enemy commander, but there's a ton of pop-up missions that appear that can lead to different outcomes and early on you cannot just complete everything with these. You need to level up your character and unlock new skills and get a horse to easily complete everything within a certain time. And to avoid a game over. Like Mitsuhide needs to escort Nobunaga in his first mission, but there's other stuff happening you could help in, but that would lead to Nobunaga's death. Once leveled up, you can easily take on these tasks, adding replay value. Plus, this is a way to earn bonuses like new skills, mounts, bodyguards, and weapons. And also to boost your allies' morale. There's also roughly 21 unique stages in the game. Another thing that's been changed from the first game is the removal of branching story paths. Now you just have a straightforward Musua mode. In turn, you can unlock a single dream mode stage after completing a character's Musua mode. So after completing Mitsuhide Akechi's Musua, I got his dream stage to play. You can get one for every 24 characters, giving you 24 more stages to play.
Mitsuhide, finally I can see the rage in your eyes that I have always wanted of you. I cannot do this. If I were to kill you... Then I could seize the land and make it my own. But... But... That isn't what I want. I want to see this land... As only you can make it. I've been foolish. Blind to my own weakness. Mitsuhide. Mitsuhide, your Japan is one that I would have liked to have seen. Huh? No! Live on, Mitsuhide. Free mode is the same old, same mode, and I don't see the appeal. Unless you're playing as Romaru or Akuni, as this is the only way to play as them once you figure out how to unlock them. But even then, you can replay any stage you already completed as the character from their respective story mode. I guess if you just want to play as a certain character and play a certain battle, maybe one they never existed in, then Bone Apple Teeth. I have no reason to use this mode. Everyone from the first game in Extreme Legends returns with several new characters including Nene, Iyasu Tokugawa, Nagamasa Azai, Musashi, Miyamoto, Yoshihiro, Shimazu, Kotaro Fuma, Kanesugu, Nao, Sakanshima, Mitsunori Ishida, and Jinichio Tachibana. You also have two unique NPCs being Katsui Shibata and Kojiro Sasuki. The only newcomers I like are Iyasu, Jinichio, and Kotaro. The other ones, I'm fine with them there, but I could live without them. Every one of them does get a Musuo mode. The only two that get no Musuo mode are Romaru and Okuni, who are hidden. This is a land without war. There is no struggle now. <laughs> I made sure of that. What? What was I thinking? My dream is to bring an end to this state of constant war. I sought a lord capable of doing so, and found him in Lord Nobunaga. I serve him because he can end the suffering that Japan's people currently endure. I would serve anyone who could. Wait. That's it. I can realize my own dream. With my own hands, I can bring an end to this chaos. The enemy is at Honnoji! Nobunaga. Combat remains almost identical to the first game, however it is more fluid and smooth here, and more enjoyable to use. 
One thing that was removed, however, is the bow. They removed it in favor of a new attack option where you press and hold R1 and use square or triangle to attack. I honestly don't miss it, but it was nice to have. Especially in tight situations where you were struggling for dear life, it did come in handy. Another change, however, is the removal of multiple bodyguards and items. That's right, no more items to boost your stats like speed, missile gauge, attack, etc. Now it's replaced with skills you gain through battles and the shop. As for bodyguards, you cannot create a unit anymore like in the first game. Now it's just random goons you hire, with only one being allowed to follow you at a time. So you can get a monk, ninja, sumo, archer, musket, spear, and sword bodyguard, but only one can follow you into battle, akin to Dynasty Warriors 5 bodyguard system. They also do not get skills or items this time around. I did enjoy putting Chris Gildart, Esmongold, somewhere near gamers, and Moist Critical into the first game as bodyguards and watch them slaughter people with me. Sucks it was removed, but I'm not really missing it. The bodyguard is more useless now and is just there for the sake of being there. Then come, Mitsuhide. I never liked survival mode and it comes back, but this time there is no audio from anyone speaking. Also, it's just random objectives as you progress to every floor. This mode is needed though if you want to unlock Ramaru Mori. Of course I do, but damn, is this mode just so slow and boring. Also a fatal flaw in the design is, you cannot play any other mode as your survival mode save is the only one allowed at a time. If you play any other mode, your survival progress will be deleted and you must start all over again. How dumb. Glad this was removed in Samurai Warriors 5. Citadel mode is far superior in every way. There's a new mode instead of versus, challenge, and custom officer mode. And that is some stupid Mario Party like minigame where you wander aboard and use gold to buy property. I guess it's more in line with Monopoly at that point. But damn is it boring. I quit after about 2 minutes. It's that dreadfully droll. Let's move on to other stuff. Cause I'm glad they never brought this crap mode back in later games. Now if only they got rid of survival mode too. There are 3 major glitches in this game that were never fixed. This be a Nene transformation bug. Where she keeps floating up in the air after turning into Hanzo or Kataro and you must use a jump charge attack to come back down. Another glitch is the mission goal of killing 100 units at Odawara Castle, where there is a chance of it never completing no matter what you do and you will fail the objective. The last glitch is probably the most game breaking and that's playing as Ramaru Mori at Hanoji will lead to a game over randomly sometimes if you rescue Nobunaga and escort him out of the area. Another feature to this game is the shop. You can buy new skills and upgrades here for the skills. You can also buy horses and bodyguards as well. And there's occasionally sales on all of these, so you can get them at a discount. Then you can upgrade your weapon to get new abilities slotted into them if you have the space. Though it is random and not fun because of it. So you could end up getting a speed boost, or a luck boost, a dexterity boost, an attack boost, you name it to your weapon and not what you exactly wanted instead. The only other stuff this game has to offer is a vault to view everything. It's just a gallery for anything you've unlocked such as movies, officers, weapons, horses, bodyguards, you name it. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Nobunaga, you look well. Lord Nagamasa has chosen the shame of surrender rather than sacrifice his wife and men. And what does that leave you with now? Honor? Or perhaps love? If you wish to kill me, then do it. I'm sorry, Lord Mitsuhide.
Mitsuhide, huh? what do you see in Nagamasa's death? The pride of a warrior. The only reason that Nagamasa participated in this battle was to sacrifice himself for honor. And so I allowed him to. That was his desire. However, for him to take his own life. What do you desire of me, warrior? That is simple. To see you as ruler of Japan, and to see you put an end to these wars. Watch and you'll see. At the end of the day, I'm proud to say this game has aged quite well for being 17 years old. From its improved combat to the tolerable English dub, and better storytelling. Samurai Warriors 2 was worth your time as it was mine. I give it a thumbs up on the recommendation and an easy great score. I'm looking forward to covering the last of the Samurai Warriors series in the future. All I have left is Samurai Warriors 2 Empires, 2 Extreme Legends, and then finally, Samurai Warriors 3. Till then, this is all for this video. See y'all later. Look, Lord Nobunaga, this shall be the land that I desired. One without war, where all people can live in peace. It is only missing one thing. Only you, my lord. Live on, Mitsuhide.